We discovered three words that if they're missing from a LinkedIn profile, stop people standing out from their competition and end any chance of massive, fast growth and clients. Because over seven years, I've personally spoken to 2,301 entrepreneurs directly on Zoom about their LinkedIn profiles while making $3.2 million. I know exactly how much money they all make and there's one thing that you can write instead and you can all do it today because we found those with smaller followings, when they did this, they made more money than the LinkedIn influencers with big following. But first, we need to make sure you're selling the right thing on your profile, otherwise these three words don't work. And if you just try and sell your product or write about your services in the headline or the cover image, like a lot of people do. Based on the data we saw, it's not gonna work. And what we should do instead is something that the great Greek philosopher Aristotle spoke about because what he had was a framework on persuasion that everybody who made money in these profiles was using. And where this comes from, a while ago, I was posting a lot of content on LinkedIn. I was sending a lot of messages and I'd optimized my profile, but I couldn't get any attraction. And I explained this to my then mentor, Simon, and he said to me, Mark, he said, pull up on the screen the profiles of the five people that you spoke to who were making the most money and let's take a look at them. So I pulled them up and then he said to me, Mark, can you just look at those profiles and can you tell me what they've got in common? What are they all selling? And I looked at the profiles and I couldn't figure it out. And that's when I realized what I had to do. And Simon then went on to explain. He said, Mark, what these people understand is they understand communication when it comes to generating clients on LinkedIn is not about what you say. It's the context within which you say it. Or in other words, these profiles had figured out that nobody's going to listen or talk about what you sell or what you do until they believe that you're an authority, have credibility and can be trusted. And that is what Aristotle called ethos. And that's exactly what we're going to do now with these two steps before we go into the three words at the end. And the first thing you need to do is make sure your cover image doesn't look like a billboard because a billboard is what you see next to the highway and it's what McDonald's and Burger King and all the fast food restaurants and even the fast food companies use to advertise their products. And I don't want to be mistaken as a brand with fast food and frozen food, do you? That doesn't build authority and trust. And what you need to do instead is think of Harley Street. Harley Street is a street in London. You don't need to have been there to get the point of what I'm about to describe and what you need to do with your LinkedIn profile. Because Harley Street is a world-renowned street in the center of London where all the top class surgeons on the planet do business. And when I first went to Harley Street, I was looking around. I remember I was looking around and I was like, where are they actually doing business? I couldn't figure out who was who. There were no big signs. There was no advertising. There was nothing like you see on a storefront like you see on LinkedIn. All there were were just black doors and it looked like a very small residential street. But do you know what? When I looked closely next to each door, there was a tiny silver little plaque and all it had was the name of the individual and the problem they solved in two, maybe three, maybe four words like Dave Smith, cardiac surgeon or June Smith, ENT surgeon. And that was it. And it spoke to a problem that their target market had. Here's one up on the screen. You know exactly what they do. Here's another one. Three words. Very simple. Very clean. Okay, let's quickly move on to the next thing you need to do to build authority even more. And we're going to take advantage here of something that Netflix, Amazon, Prime Video and all the best book publishing houses already know. And it's how they made all of their money. And let me ask you a question. Have you ever chosen on Netflix or on Amazon or in a bookstore a movie or a book based purely on the thumbnail or the cover. I know I have. And all of these companies know that we do do this because they understand the way our brains work and the way that we are wired, the way that we process imagery. And we process imagery and pictures significantly quicker than we process written information. And the good news is we can take advantage of this neurological hack in our LinkedIn profile. Just imagine right now that feeling you would have if the profile image that you used created the feel that you wanted, projected the authority or that ethos, and there was an easy, free way to get data on it. So all you need to do is run it through this website, make sure you're a seven or above, or even an eight or above if you want to push on every single one of the free ratings. And don't worry, at the end of this, we will drop a link so you can do this and do it for free. For now, let's move on to the three words that all of the top LinkedIn profiles, without exception, that we interviewed had present. And it's especially important now LinkedIn has reached over 1 billion users and has become so big because I used to think that I was just competing with people in my niche. But another mentor really helped me understand that I needed to approach LinkedIn 
completely differently if I was going to make money and find freedom like I have. Because one day he said to me, Mark, you're just not attracting enough attention. And I said, look, Dan, it doesn't matter because I know I'm well positioned against the competition. I know I'm good at what I do. And you know what he said? He said, Mark, it doesn't matter. Now that we have social media and the entire world is online, you're not just competing with people in your field. You're competing for attention with everybody on LinkedIn. And, and I said, Dan, what, what do you mean? And he went on to explain. He said, Mark, in order to sell somebody and to make money, you first of all have to have somebody's attention. And the problem that you have, Mark, is not that your headline's incorrect, not that your profile image is bad, or not even that your content is bad. It's just that you think you're in competition with people that do the same as what you do. And as soon as I realized this, I totally shifted my mindset and my approach. And I realized I couldn't do this by staying on LinkedIn, staying on the LinkedIn feed in a dogfight for attention with LinkedIn influencers. Number one, because it's way too busy. Number two, there's way too many influencers that have already got a big following and a lot of attention. And we don't compete with them on LinkedIn. We do something smarter. Why do we do something smarter? The data and the statistics show that people spend more time in their email inbox than they do on their LinkedIn feed, especially the busy decision makers that you're chasing. Because one thing I found to be true through life, growing this business, is that people that don't have much money, they generally have more time. But people that do have a lot of money or a lot of decision-making ability, they don't have a lot of time. But we still need to, first of all, get their attention on LinkedIn as the first step, because it's a lot easier to do that there. Why? Because you've, you've already created the frame of authority and the feel of your profile. So then what do we do next? Very simply, you need to take advantage of a new feature on LinkedIn, which is available with both the free and the paid plans, and you need to enable it and you need to link to a website, but not any website, and you need to use the specific free words. And the objective of the page is not authority. We've done that in LinkedIn. The objective here is pure conversion. We want to collect the prospect's email because I would rather have an email list of 10,000 subscribers who've opted in voluntarily to hear from me and read my emails than 100,000 LinkedIn followers every time. So here's the three words you need to put in the link. You wanna choose either join my newsletter or join my event. And which one you choose will depend on exactly what I'm about to say, because both work and both are a type of lead magnet. And you might be wondering, what's a lead magnet? It's just something you offer in value in return for the email on your landing page. Now, I personally, in my business, have done one of them and the people making money from the 2000 plus LinkedIn profiles we spoke to them also did one of them, the same one. So which one do you choose? And I learned this from a book called The Sales Acceleration Formula by Mark Roberge, who was the first sales director of HubSpot. He took them from zero to 100 million and they're now a billion dollar company in the B2B marketing space. Basically, he said that after a lot of testing and getting a lot of impressions, which is a lot of people visiting their landing pages, they found that when people opted in for a certain type of lead magnet, they had a much higher probability of becoming a client and making money. And the type of lead magnet that best suited them was slightly higher commitment. And this was exactly the same as the profiles we interviewed. When they had a higher commitment lead magnet, they made more money. So it's really, really important you choose an event and not a checklist or anything like that or a newsletter. I put up here a link to a video where I show you exactly how to build a landing page. It takes you through this entire process and it fits in with this framework that we're talking through today. See you in the next video.